Hello, I'm Barry Osborne from Rural Mission Solutions and I'm welcoming you to this video. A great and powerful man at the height of his career suddenly discovers a shadow cast across his life. He has a terrible disease that's going to cause him great suffering and eventual death. Things look hopeless. Meanwhile, a young girl, a slave, and somebody who has been taken from her own country and forced into service has the secret of how he might be delivered. But will she find sufficient compassion, conviction, and courage to pass on this information? And behind this drama, there is a lesson to be learned of how one person's actions can cause a whole chain of events that can change the world. Welcome to the story of Unlikely Advisors. Uh, a warm welcome, good morning to everybody. Uh, Gordon and I, I'm Barry Osborne. <coughs> uh, we're here uh, to share with you uh, uh, another of our series of one of God's surprising choices and today we're looking at unlikely advisors and to be honest with you we've toyed around with that or at least I have toyed around with that title try to get that <coughs> right but we're going to be talking about unlikely advisors today but well, you're warmly welcome it's lovely to see you here and we pray that uh, you will be greatly blessed as we share together so let's just Sorry, let's just bow our heads in a moment and share a prayer together. Loving Heavenly Father, as we come together again this Sunday morning, we pray for a sense of your presence with us. Lord, some of us cannot even see the faces of those that are with us today, but we pray, Lord, that you'll help us in the way that we know that they are there, also to know that you are here. We are, you are our unseen guest, and we welcome you and we pray that you will take into your hands all that has been prepared for this service this morning and cause that through it your word will be heard and your touch will be felt. We pray for any that are with us who have special needs today, any that have joined us with sadness in their hearts mm. or that are facing particular challenges and difficulties. Lord, we pray that they will find your peace and your blessing here in our gathering today, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Mm. So again, a very, very warm welcome to all who have come and gathered. We have, over the past weeks, bit by bit, we have uh, lost some of our congregation because they are going back into church or they have their mm. own local arrangement on a Sunday. But we've been thinking about how God chooses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise and the weak things of the world to shame the strong passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, that I think is going to be very relevant as we continue today so we're going to get straight into our first hymn <coughs> and uh, we've checked the sound so hopefully everything is all right I just rely on Gordon shouting at me if it's uh, not working properly but uh, our first hymn is um, uh, a 19, um, sorry, a, a 20th century hymn, and um, uh, and to to a lively tune, and uh, it's go forth and tell. And with this one, we've got our friend Tony, uh, who is uh, going to be leading us, uh, Tony Newnham, and there's quite a long lead in.
Um, so here's our Bible reading to, for today. Have you got a Bible with you? If you have, open it up at 2 Kings. So you're into the Old Testament <clears throat> and about, I suppose, about halfway through, you'll come to Samuel, Kings and Chronicles. So Samuel comes first, 1 and 2, and then Chronicles 1 and 2, and then, sorry, Kings 1 and 2, and then Chronicles 1 and 2. So we're in 2 Kings, <clears throat> chapter 5. And uh, just to remind you, last week we were looking at Elijah, and now we've moved on from Elijah to his successor, who was Elisha. Elisha was described as a handy man to know in a crisis. And if you want to know why he's called that, well, read these chapters in 2 Kings. It's an amazing story, and it comes across really in a storytelling mode. You'll find the style of the narrative is very much storytelling. So it's a great passage to read, and you'll find out why Elisha was called a handyman to know in a crisis. So let's uh, listen to God's word together. Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet who's in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, ten sets of clothing. And the letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. Well, <laughs> as soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and he said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Make the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So <clears throat> may God bless his word to our hearts and minds today as we share something of this story. Gordon, I don't know how many times you might have preached on this, but I think I must have preached on this story uh, possibly hundreds of times. And uh, um, it's been a great message for evangelism. We've used it for evangelism and uh, it's something that's been very, very, very precious uh, uh, over the years. And I kind of guess that uh, you too have uh, read that. Now I'm having problems <coughs> again, so bear with me. <coughs> My mouse has done a disappearing trick. <laughs> okay, go on, let's, uh, let's uh, unpack the story a little. We've got a man who's a leper. And of course, in those days, uh, <coughs> leprosy was a fatal disease. And the consequences were bad. It attacks the nerves. <clears throat> so you find your hands don't feel properly or your feet don't feel properly. And uh, you often, lepers would often suffer injury because they had no sense of feeling. And um, so that was often a, a problem. But the disease would get worse gradually and it would result in um, loss of social contact. So they wouldn't be able to stay in their home. They would lose their contact with their family. Uh, and, and that was really sad. And also his position. So this but is really important, isn't it? You know, here's this great man, really important, well esteemed by his 
uh, by the king uh, and, and everything. And then we get this enormous, but he was a leper. And uh, <clears throat> very often when we've been preaching about that, we've talked about the fact that all of us are sinners. And it doesn't matter how wonderful we are, how many good deeds we've done, all the, the things we've done, there's a but in our lives. The Bible mm. says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so mm. for me, the story straight away comes in and speaks into my life, my situation in a very powerful way because I, 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 I'm a sinner. So the first thing of the story is, here's this important man, but, but mm. it's all wiped out in a moment by this fact that he has mm. this terrible disease. So the character we've got is Naaman who's a leper, but there are other characters. Hey, that's right. Um, I had a friend who used to say that they're one of God's goats. What do you mean by that? Well, there's always a but. Yes. And, uh, <coughs> and of course, that, uh, I mean, today leprosy is called Hansen's disease. Uh, and just as an aside, not to run off too much, but if people say to you, uh, you know, about the problem of pain, well, actually exploring, there, were, there was somebody, and just gone for me now, but wrote a very good book about that, not C.S. Lewis, he's written one, but just saying actually what those suffering from Hansen's disease need is pain, because, it, because they can't feel pain, that they injure themselves, mm. and they start losing limbs and whatever, and gangrene sets in. So pain is God's gift to us to remind us something's wrong. So just an aside, that is very important. One of the big motifs of this story as we carry it through, and you've already alluded to it, Barry, is that we talk about power, wealth, prestige. Um, uh, and there we are, we've held all this money uh, and wealth and power of Naaman and the power of kings. And we're up there at the top table. We're Buckingham Palace or wherever we are. You know, we're, we're, we're up there in Eton and all that kind of stuff. Yet, how God works, as so often is, is right down in the lower rung. This is very much bottom up, not top down. They immediately thought, we've got a problem. How do we solve it? Top down. Lots of money, big people, prestige. Yet they were to learn. It was the other way around. And, um, and it comes through the unlikely messenger, of this little servant girl who we heard had been captured. Uh, and if you read the... Um, the the script of right it says she was actually despised she was you know she, we don't know how young she was but she there she was she was taken away from her family it could have been that um naaman and his troops were the ones who raided her village um and we know that sadly goes on today so we know about what that was like so we really you know this servant girl is in a really lowly position there and uh, and you naturally, you, if you were that little girl, you might hear that Naaman's got leprosy, and thinking, "Yay, that's really good, isn't it? That shows you that God's brought that down on you." And um, but she doesn't. How on earth does she bring up that compassion in her heart um, and the care that she seemed to find for her, speaking to her mistress, who then speaks to her husband? Um, uh, really taking her, the, well, a life and a hand, really, because there she is sending, going to suggest that he goes off hundreds of miles on a journey uh, to cure leper. And, and I love that kind of innocence almost. Uh, there's a kind of a lovely naivety that Jesus speaks about as well. And Jesus references this story, of course. But there's a lovely kind of naivety there that, that children often bring, that they, they, they have a can-do attitude. Of course, there's this man there, and of course, God's God, and of course, he can do this. Uh, and why don't you go and do it? You know, I, I, I know around kids sometimes, they're just wonderful. They're just, and you're thinking, yep. <laughs> and I think Jesus commends that kind of, let's just jump in there and do something. So she speaks to her uh, mistress, who then speaks to Naaman, and sets off this whole chain of event. One little girl, one word, how again, who had actually told this girl about Elijah? Elisha, get it right. <laughs> um, something had gone on there that set her up for this. But uh, what, a, what a lovely uh, a, a girl as well. Uh, and then, of course, as she goes through, it's very much juxtaposed with the king of Israel's 
uh, when, when he gets the message. Uh, and of course, Aram uh, Suri, as we call it today, was battled with Israel. <clears throat> and the king, he, he doesn't know. He hasn't the same faith. He obviously knows Elisha, but, but he doesn't. <clears throat> he's got no faith in Elisha. He, he thinks, my goodness me, you know, what's going on here? And so you've got the faith of this young girl hundreds of miles away. And they're right living sort of in the same country right down the road is this great man of God who the king hasn't got a clue is the answer to his problems. The answer is right under his nose, yet he can't see it. And yet the girl all those miles away, she knows the answer to the problem and she can see it as well. Yeah, I, I think that's, they, they are um, quite the opposite to each other, aren't they? <clears throat> and I like the fact that you said that she had confidence. And I like to think she's, again, you brought it out, her courage, willing to share what she believed with others. And uh, of course, in our own lives, sometimes we lack confidence and sometimes we also lack courage, which is a great shame. And you said about her starting off a chain. And uh, we've been thinking about that and thinking about, I've been watching a TV advertisement for the I think it's called the, the Royal London Insurance that's got an over 50s policy. And it's a funny uh, commercial because it's one person tells another. So A tells B, then B goes and tells C and C goes and tells D. And they pass on the good news from one to another. And uh, we're going to listen to a song now about um, how somebody does a little job. This is a, a wartime song, Gracie Fields. I wonder who can remember Gracie Fields, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to listen to Gracie Fields way back in 1942, singing the Thingamy Bob song. So uh, sit back and 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 listen to the Thingamy Bob song. I can't pretend to be a great celebrity, but. I'm quite important in me way The job I have to do may not sound much to you But all the same I'm very proud to say I'm the girl that makes the thing That drills the hole that holds the ring That drives the rod that turns the knob That works the thing on me bob I'm the girl that makes the thing that holds the oil, that oils the ring, that takes the shank, that moves the crank, that works the thing on me, Bob. It's a ticklish sort of job, making a thing for a thing on me, Bob, especially when you don't know what it's for. But it's the girl that makes the thing that drills the hole that holds the ring that makes the thing a me bob that makes the engines roar and it's the girl that makes the thing that holds the oil that oils the ring that makes the thing a me bob that's going to win the war I'm we'll have to leave it there what a wonderful <laughs> song that is and and how it illustrates uh, that, that in God's plan, there's nobody that's unimportant. Uh, we were thinking about Billy Graham and the thousands and thousands of people, one for the Lord. Someone shared the gospel with Billy Graham. And you don't know, you, you, people put themselves down and say, I can't do very much. You know, every one of us gets opportunities just to say a little word about Jesus. Just saying, even if you hear somebody take his name in vain, just saying, well, he's my saviour. And, you know, there are ways of sowing a seed. You never know where it's going to take you. And so it's really a wonderful thing just to ponder this and be aware of um, how uh, a little thing can be part of God's chain of things that might cause something quite amazing to be done in his life. So we've got the king of Israel, Gordon. You're saying he had to send uh Naaman and his retinue all this gold and silver all these animals all these servants off to Elisha and I kind of wonder what's in Naaman's mind he turns up at the prophet's house which I don't think would have been a very grand place <clears throat> and he stands there thinking how important he is and he's just now I'm going to meet this great prophet and who comes out 
but a servant. Now, this is a story about servants, isn't it? All the main characters in this story are servants. We had the servant girl. Now we've got Elisha's servant who comes out and tells him what he's got to do. He's got to go to the River Jordan and dip in it seven times and he'll be healed of his leprosy and he'll be cleaned. And in his mind, he's thinking, there's got to be something really great, something really wonderful to me. I'm an important person. And he's being told he's got to dip in a dirty river. Yeah. What was his reaction? Yeah. You know, the, the story that's popped into my head just now as we were talking about uh, is that lovely scene in the king's speech when the, uh, the king and the queen go and have tea in, this, in um, the, the guy's house, who, uh, his name just gone for me now, who's helping the king to... Oh, you're uh, talking about the film. The film, yeah, mm -hmm. the king's speech. Uh, and they go into this sort of like row of terraced houses, you know, and, the, and there's a great big limo outside, you know, everybody thinking, whoa, what's going on here? Uh, and again, it's, a, it's an interesting parallel there. And somebody could help the, the king on go, uh, you know, loose, uh, being able to get rid of his stammer as well. But, um, uh, and of course, you're right, uh, the, the king of Israel is, is uh, Elisha, he tears his robe, Elisha sends him a message, um, don't worry, send him to me. So he pulls up, uh, and you can imagine, we've, we've heard about all this wealth, so uh, you can imagine all the kids are out looking at this, there's these great big chariots and these big soldiers and weapons and gold everywhere. You know, what is going on? And, and of course, Naaman's important, second only to the king. I'm a great warrior. This man, I, I'm, I'm important. Look at me. You can hear him screaming out, look at me. And I've come all this way. Now you've got to come out here uh, and you've got to sort of sort me out and you've got to do it. I want to see Elisha. You're the top man. Come out here and wave your arms around. Uh, and he gets just this scruffy little servant comes out and just says, Elisha just says, go and dip yourself in the river seven times. That's all you need to do. Can you imagine him? And of course, he totally loses it, doesn't he? But thankfully, it's his servant. Just say, just hang on a minute. Just hang on a minute, if you don't mind. What if he asked you to do something really hard and really difficult? Would you have done that? Uh, and makes him think, so, so if this is an easy thing. You've got basically nothing to lose. Why don't you give it a punt? Why don't you just try it and see what happens? So you can see Nehman thinking, oh, okay, let's give it a go then. Do you think, Gordon, that this was, uh, in a sense, God teaching Naaman's a lesson of humility, that when we come to God with our problems, with our needs, we don't come with arrogance, we don't come with presumption, but we need to learn to come with humility, to say, nothing in my hand I bring, mm. simply to your cross I mm. cling. Mm. And, and, mm. And, and in all the experiences we have in our relationship with an almighty God is, is it's not about show, it's about coming humbly before mm. God. And that's mm. so important, I think, mm. in the story. Shall I just carry on and just finish the bit off where he goes and dips himself in the yes, river? Yes, uh, this is the bit I love to do when I do school's work. Uh, when I do school's work, um, I, I picked up a, a way of telling this story that uh, a former colleague, Alfred Lavender, uh, used uh, in a wonderful situation with me and he used to show himself dipping himself into the river what he used to do was duck down and he would raise his forearm and make that like the level of the water and he would put it over his head and pop up and every time he'd look at his arm and say no it's still here no it's still here six times he's done it no it's still here so he went the seventh time doing it absolutely exactly what he was told to do ducks under the water stays under for a little bit longer just to see if that would help and then he emerges spluttering and looks at wow look what's happened my skin is like that of a young boy exactly what the prophet had sent the message about his skin had been returned i once saw a man healed of cancer and his skin 24 hours after he'd been prayed for his skin was like that of a young child absolutely amazing and uh, I can imagine Naaman would have been skipping around really, really excited. What do you, what do you think about that? And, and so it is about obedience, isn't it? Yes. Again, that it had to be obedient to God. Uh, and it, so we learned that real lesson about obedience as well. Uh, uh, but in, in response, 
Naaman still wants to offload um, a load of these gifts that he's brought up, doesn't he? So, uh, uh, and Elisha is probably thinking, well, yeah, we could do lots of stuff with that one. Uh, and he may be even, there's an interesting little point there to think about when we think about charities, because Elisha could have said, well, I don't want it for me, but you know what? This could really help us out uh, and help the community out, and we could do some great things with this. But, and it's, it's just interesting, sort of teasing that one out. But does he accept the gifts? Uh, what do you think, Barry, on that one? I, 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 think, I think that the, the issue is recognizing that we deserve nothing from God. So everything we get from God is by his generosity. God's riches at Christ's expense is all of grace. You can't buy it. It's all of God's generosity. And I think that's the great lesson here. And I'm glad that he said no, uh, because it makes the point that you cannot buy healing from God. You cannot buy salvation. You cannot earn a single blessing from God. It all comes out of his generosity. And we have no right to claim anything. The bit in the story at the end is very interesting to me, Gordon, because although he can't get rid of uh, his gold and silver on, on Elisha, we know the servant misbehaves and gets involved, but what Naaman does do, he asks for two mules and loads them with earth from Israel that he's going to take back into his own country. And he's made this declaration of faith. Now I know there is no God other than Yahweh. And, and that's where he's come. He's come to the place of knowing that there's only the one true God, and that's the God he's going to trust. And even though his job will require him to go into a, a temple, the temple of Rimmon, and uh, bow down as he goes with the king, into that situation, it, it's, his heart is not going to be in it. His body may do it, and he wants to know that it'll be okay, but he has really turned his faith around. So he's got something much more than his healing out of this, hasn't he? Yeah, so we, we kind of learn with this, don't we, Barry, that it's, you know, whoever we are, we might be the girl who makes the thing, da, 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 the thing yeah. in the box. And yet we just need to speak out and do our part and not worry. You know, sometimes we get, we get in a bit of a fuss is because um, our name's not mentioned, you know, so we, we maybe do something in, in the church or whatever, uh, and all these people get thanked and whatever, and we're not thanked or we're not mentioned. Um, I, I, and we need to learn to just sit and say, if we've been faithful, we've done what God's asked, God recognizes it, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Gordon, I think it's time we should turn to the Lord in prayer. And I believe you're ready to uh, lead us uh, in some thanksgiving for all that God has done for us and also in some prayers. Oh, I've just popped this one up. This is an interesting one, isn't it? Thanks for want good, of isn't a nail, it? the shoe was lost. For want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For want of a horse, the rider was lost. For want of a rider, the battle was lost. For want of a battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. I wonder if we fail to do our little part as servants, what the consequences might be. Lead us in prayer, please, Gordon. Will do. And we do give thanks to God for this um, wonderful story that can teach us so much. And we do thank God for little people for the gift of children and the faith that they bring that wonderful innocence and we do pray father particularly at this time as we think of children of our schools on holiday we do think of children throughout the world and our minds and thoughts particularly go to the people of beirut at this time praying for the Christians there, working alongside many others, singing to bring relief. And pray for that proposed demonstration that that won't spill over into more violence because we know how fragile that territory is. We also pray for those caught up in the Indian airplane crash 
and again for those who are grieving. Continuing to pray for those affected by COVID-19 in one way or another. And we do pray for those who are trying to work this out. And as we've been thinking about, we do pray for lots of grassroots initiatives. We give you thanks for the people who have been stepping up and offering help through food banks and many other ways. I do pray that we may learn lessons from them. We bring before God as we think of Naaman as uh, suffering from leprosy, we may ourselves or know people ourselves who are in particular need at this time, who are sick and poorly. And we know that God can bring health, healing and wholeness to them. And so we just name them quietly in our hearts now before God. And Father, as we reflect on this story, we sit here this morning and you may like to open your hands, turn them upwards and offer yourself to God. So Father, we offer ourselves to you for this day, for this week ahead, praying that we may be bold and courageous to speak out, to play our part. Pray you may know that prompting of the Holy Spirit stirring up within our heart and our soul. Do we pray all of these things in and through the name of our precious Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gordon, um, just reflecting on this story and the way it speaks into our hearts and lives, uh, I, I wonder, I think the point that you made about offering ourselves afresh to God, if there's a word that we could share and learning from this young girl's confidence that starts the whole ball rolling, our confidence and our courage, and thinking about the servants and all the part they have to play. It's a great time to offer ourselves afresh to God, isn't it? And we're mm -hmm. going to <clears throat> move to a close with uh, the wonderful hymn of Graham Kendrick, One Shall Tell Another, He Shall Tell His Friend. Mm -hmm. One shall tell another and he shall tell his friend Husbands, wives, and children shall come following on. From house to house in families shall all be gathered in. And lights will shine in every street so warm and welcome in.
the kingdom of God He longs to do much more than our faith is yet allowed To thrill us and surprise us with His sovereign power When darkness has been darkest, the brightest light will shine His invitation comes to us, it's yours and it's mine Gordon, it's a wonderful story, the story of the healing of Naaman, but uh, there's so much in it. Is there a particular point that stands out for you that you would say, I want to underline this? I, I think so, and I think we've alluded to it several times, and it's about power, wealth, prestige, and humility and obedience. And... It's doing what we can, where we can, how we can, that's important. And offer, you know, again, we run to another story, the, which is told about the feeding of the 5,000. Uh, and in one of those accounts, it's a little boy who offers his packed lunch that God can use. Yeah. Look in what's in your hand. It's your packed lunch in your hand that's going to feed a multitude. You just never know how, what you offer to God. And so I think that's, you know, what we want to take away. Think of this little servant girl, maybe think of that little boy with his packed lunch, offering it to God and yep. just say, uh, what can we offer to you? Um, and let God to use it and multiply it. Yeah. So often people don't witness for God because they don't feel they can tell the whole story. You don't need to tell the whole story, do you? Just, no. just a little bit, tell the little bit that you know, tell it simply, tell it sincerely. For me, yeah. just a thought behind this story is the fact that we're talking about someone who's not part of the Jewish family, mm. who experiencing the blessing of God. So here's yet another sign that God is the God of the whole world and his love and grace reaches out to everybody. And there's mm. nothing, let's say it again, we said each week, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. So just to uh, be aware of, of, of that, I would say, is important. So there we go. Thank you for sharing with us today. Uh, stay on for Coffee Pot if you can. If you can't and you're going on to something else, God bless you if you're going on to something else. Be a blessing to them. Try and find a way of helping and ministering and serving there. If you're free on Tuesday night, we have some really exciting Bible studies. Gordon, we've moved from looking at uh, the, the letter to the church at Ephesus. We're now looking at Paul's letter to Timothy, who he sent to Ephesus to sort out problems. And we had quite an interesting Bible study last week. We're moving into chapter two of 1 Timothy Tuesday. Don't have to be a Bible scholar. Just come along and share. And of course, don't forget to share good things with your friends. And if you're uncertain about your own faith, you can go to this website, www christianity.org.uk all the w's and then christianity.org.uk great website so again thank you for your prayers and support for the work of rural mission solutions 
We're glad to bring you these ministries online during this time of difficulty. We thank you for the prayers that support us and make our ministry possible and for those who give and donate. You can do it online. Obviously, there's difficulties in getting funds into charities and all charities, including us, have suffered as a result of the virus. So just remember that there is an online facility. It's quite secure. If you go to www.give.net and then the forward slash 2003, zero triple eight that's all the w's then give.net forward slash two zero zero three zero eight 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 and thanks so much for those who have done it we give credits for all those we are grateful for the ministry of tony newnham and uh, we've uh, drawn a couple of things off the internet and we've checked and tried to make sure we haven't violated any uh, copyright uh, and we've, we've done all that's necessary. So it's time for us to say goodbye, Gordon. Yes, indeed. So stay safe and stay blessed, as it says there. As I often say, Barry, be blessed, stay blessed, and be a blessing. Thank you. Yes, God bless you all. See you again. See you in the coffee pot time. So I hope you found that interesting and helpful. Have a browse around some of the other videos. You'll find all sorts of interesting things on this channel we'd love you to have a look around and maybe to come to look at our website which is at www.ruralmissionsolutions.org.uk that's www.ruralmissionsolutions.org.uk remember to click on the like thumbs up and also click the bell for notifications if you'd like to know when other videos are added thanks for watching god bless you